Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a RedGamingTed.com video. My name is Paul, and today we'll discuss the subject of net neutrality. If you're an internet user, and you know how the internet currently operates, then you need to know this information. For your ease, we'll split this video into three sections. In the first part, we'll discuss what net neutrality is. In the second, we'll discuss how it could possibly impact you and your internet browsing. And then, in the third and final part, we'll close out by giving you my own opinions and what you can possibly do if you wish to act. So what is net neutrality? You've probably heard the term a few times, but despite various companies making it seem like a complex or difficult to understand topic, the reality is actually fairly simple. Currently, you pay a set fee for your internet connection, and everything you do with that connection, all of the traffic, is treated equally. So if you browse onto YouTube, you'll get the same connection speed if you use Facebook, or say you were to download a game via Steam. Only your internet connection speed and the server you're connecting to limit what speed you can get. It makes sense, right? Simple to understand and is very logical. You get what you pay for. However, Various ISPs in the United States, including Time Warner, Verizon, Comcast, and AT&T, wish to change this. What they propose is a so-called fast and slow lane system. And while this might sound fantastic on paper, you might think, well, hey, I've got a 100 megabyte connection now. Does that mean that so-called fast lane sites will load up at, say, a 150 megabyte connection? This is the logical conclusion. Fast would imply faster than you've currently got, but no, no they do not. Instead, fast lane websites will load at exactly the same current speed as you're paying for, while other websites which are deemed to be in a slow lane, you're going to have to cough up a monthly premium if you want to be able to access them at a decent speed. You may notice that many of the ISPs in this are cable companies, and it's no secret traditional TV is slowly becoming less popular, thanks in part to internet and on-demand TV. Imagine, however, an internet where you connect to Netflix at dial-up mode and speeds. Your internet bill will rise, and websites in the fast lane won't get any faster. They're the same speed. Websites in the slow lane could be slowed down so much you not, might not even be able to access them. Quite simply put, it hurts the service for you and the website or the companies you might frequent unless you're paying extra cash. So how could this impact you? Your browser experience is going to become inferior. Censorship of opinions or websites that your ISP just doesn't like can now become a real reality. Imagine I am your ISP and you use a competitor website of mine, I will now slow down your connection to them, effectively eliminating or stifling them as competition if you're using my internet. Unless I'm paid extra, then, eh, I guess it might be okay for now. Internet is an incredibly powerful tool. You only realize how amazing it is and how much you rely on it when something actually goes wrong. If you've ever had your service go out for a few hours because your ISP are having certain problems with their service, you'll understand what I mean. Art, history, reviews, technology, news, blogging, the collective knowledge of us as a species is all available there for free. Everyone able to make their voices heard and communicate freely via whatever method he or she should desire. Companies which would traditionally compete with one another such as Microsoft and Google, or Amazon and Netflix, to name but a few, are now all standing together against these changes. So what are my own personal opinion? Well, I think from my perspective, for the consumer, it quite frankly sucks. I live outside the United States, and I suspect many of you who are watching this will be too. And I might say, and they might say, well, I'm okay. But honestly, it may well end up impacting you anyway. Massive amounts of traffic could go through the US and their networks clogging up tend to do impact the rest of the world. And even if not, don't be too surprised if this does go through that other ISPs from other countries will at least consider similar actions and maybe try to push it through. So if you're a US citizen, you do have the power to help try and stop this. 
write to senators, speak to congressmen, get your voice out there. They're elected and they're there to represent you and the people. Make sure they know what you want. At the end of the day, they want to be re-elected. If your ISP is considering this, write to them and tell them you won't support this behavior and will look for alternatives. Please make sure that you're polite when you write, but firm. And do look for alternatives in your area. With luck, if this does go through, smaller ISPs will take advantage and they will offer packages which work just as they are now. So if Bob's ISP in your area does this, switch from the ones trying to control you and instead switch to the smaller ones such as Bob. Remember, the internet is a precious and powerful resource. Whether you're a hardcore gamer, a Netflix fiend, or someone who used Wikipedia just to learn about ancient Egypt, you don't want this experience to change. It is amazing how it is, and we want to preserve this. Finally, I want to thank you for your time in watching this video. I realize that I've only kind of touched on the surface, but this is a massive topic. I do wish you would share this video, or at the very least, share a few of the links in the video's description. In short, others are familiar with what net neutrality is, why it is important, and what you can do about it. So take care of yourselves, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye for now.